Hello all, it is Sunday, that means it is Hippie News, Hippie News Network, episode number 119. I've been doing this for a couple of years, I really enjoy bringing you the news stories. Today we've got some interesting ones, and today, my dad machine, ah, it's a way, like there's a piece of it. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm washing it, I got some ISO in it, I'm taking care of it. But I still have some medicine here to look after myself while I'm talking to you guys. My hair is so fly away. It is minus, well, it was minus 25 this morning when I woke up with wind chill. It was minus 33. And it has just raised to <laughs> minus 14. So minus 13, just changed to minus 13. And it's going up to minus 8 huge change that hurts the head but i promised you hippie news i only do it once every two weeks because i don't do it when my little boy is here so uh, they're few and far between and you guys like them so here we go this time a very canadian beginning and a more international ending but they all tied together i i tried to make sure they all tied together uh, the very first thing, geez, I'm sorry, guys, I just have hair stuck to me from this dry, dry weather. It, the hair just flies all over the place. Uh, the very first story, story is an interesting one and one that I wanted to give a warning. This, uh, this page, this report from globalnews.ca, it has some stigma attached to it. It is a story, it's a good video. There's about a three minute video, how to buy weed in Canada when it's legalized. Why they still gotta call it weed, how to buy cannabis in Canada when it's legalized. Oh, but for a name, a rose by any other name, smells as sweet. Uh, but what it does is it goes on to show you, you can watch the video and I encourage you to watch the first video because it's fair. It shows how across Canada, uh, online sales will be partly private, partly public, depending on the province, but all provinces except for the Northwest Territories have authorized online sales. Uh, it shows that the age across Canada will be 19, except Alberta and Quebec, where it will be 18. It shows that across Canada, except for Quebec, growing will be allowed and people will be able to buy seeds and plants as well as, at the beginning, cannabis flower, uh, cannabis uh, oils, no edibles at the beginning, it goes on to a few things like that. There's still some stuff to be worked out in the courts, as well as they hint that the Senate may ask for changes on the bill, which could delay July. But they've been encouraged not to, and I don't think they will. We'll see. They're pretty dead set on July going to be the start update. The warning on this page comes halfway down. Heavy pot smokers at risk of getting cannabinoid hyperemesis. I gotta warn you guys, this is, uh, <laughs> this is absolutely silly. Uh, th this is a, an attempt to scare, keep those who are scared, scared. Most people who have gotten over the fear of cannabis diseases don't believe in this disorder or syndrome. They call it a syndrome because all it is, is greening out. We could all have that at different times and we can get through it. So I'd say keep away from that. Um, but also across each province, you'll be able to buy weed through private storefronts, provincially operated entities, or a mix of both. Most provinces and territories have said yes to online sales, except Northwest. So that's kind of the landscape we're dealing with. 
Manitoba Parliament has come back and said they may not be able to be ready in time. And the government went back and said, shame on you, you should be able to. And if you aren't able to, then other provinces can sell to your province online because you're, you're not going to get the tax you wanted from it. Uh, so it's pushing forward. It's pushing forward. And the next story is kind of six or one half dozen of the other, a bit of stigma, a bit of silliness, and some data for y'all. So the next one is how much do Canadians pay for cannabis across Canada? This is quite interesting because I don't One of the most recent angles to appear comes courtesy of Stats Canada, who are trying to figure out the buying habits, so to speak, of cannabis users, both recreational and for medical purposes. Through this, they produced a chart of the cost, what Canadians paid for a gram of cannabis, I hate saying weed, per gram. And if we look at this, and you can see it, scroll down, it's, it's here, it's here. Uh, BC is cheapest at $6.94 per gram. And the territory is the highest at nine fifty two. But what this kind of represents, and it's fairly accurate, is that across Canada, we're looking at the $7 a gram average for prices. It can go up, it can go down around seven. Yet in legalization, they're aiming for a $10 gram. That's a 30% increase. If they do that, they're going to still have people going onto the streets to get it cheaper. So this should drive a whole bunch of questions about keeping the price down. Very, very important. It's interesting, but it's not, I want to say that it's not something that you can totally count on. It's Stats Canada. If Stats Canada called you and said, how much weed do you smoke? How often are you going to be honest? So take the data you get with a grain of salt, whether I give it to you or Stats Can gives it, gives it to you. It's just one data point and go get a whole bunch of more data points and make a bit of an opinion. Nothing is fact. We're moving on to the next I story. I search that for you. <laughs> Google. Google Assisted sometimes comes on. Cheers. CBD, critical mass, from MMJ, Total Healthcare, my favorite apothecary. Should be yours. This next story is from Leafly. Along the same lines, but what do people pay per gram of cannabis in cities around the world? This was, again, it's not news, it's information. Just giving you some information. And it's kind of interesting when, when you look at, we just mentioned, uh, the average seems across Canada, around 725 a gram. Uh, I would say that on average, I pay between seven and eight dollars a gram because I always buy it on sale at MMJ on Thursdays or, or on Tuesdays or Fridays. But around the world, Tokyo, thirty-two dollars per gram uh, is, is the highest. Seoul, South Korea, also thirty-two, but thirty-two and forty-four cents, thirty-two sixty-six for Tokyo. But we move over into uh, some of the more legal areas or where a lot of it grows, like New Delhi, India is the cheapest. It's illegal in New Delhi, India, but it's $4.38 a gram. So obviously it can be sold for that price. Oh, uh, Ecuador, $1.34 a gram, gram. It's decriminalized in Ecuador. Colombia, two twenty a gram. Very interesting, very interesting. It doesn't seem to go by, uh, like Colombia and Paraguay have two of the cheapest and they have a medical marijuana program. But in Indonesia, it's fully illegal and it's only 379 a gram there. Kind of neat, 
kind of neat to look at. Where the highest and lowest prices in the U.S., the highest is, uh, ooh, ooh, Los Angeles. Oh, sorry, I'm looking in the wrong column. The highest is Washington, D.C. at about $18 a gram, and the cheapest is Seattle and Denver at seven seventy a gram. So that was kind of interesting, too. Then it goes on, and I'll let you look at the rest. It goes on to talk about who consumes the most. Now, remember, all of this is dependent upon surveys that you can't fully trust the respondents to be honest about. Because even in Canada, recreationally, it's federally illegal. So who wants to answer a StatsCan survey? Not me. Moving on to the next story. Again, along the same lines, this one from cbc.ca. And this is the one that I touted uh, a week ago, that you really got to question the data that they're going by. This is, <clears throat> the story is, Canadians spent $5.7 billion on marijuana last year. Stats Canada estimates. Estimates. Remember that word. Because, I'll read some of this. Nearly 5 million Canadians spent money on marijuana last year. 5 million. I think a lot more than that. Spending an average of about $1,200 each. Now, I do challenge all of you who smoke, whether it's medically or not. $1,200 a year. That's at $200 an ounce, approximately. That's six ounces a year. I could go through an ounce in easily a week, two at the most. Uh, that And I have to get other things like topicals and all that. I think this is way undersold. And the only reason I'm sharing this one, feel free to read it, feel free. But it's all based on bullshit. There's no way only Part-time users of cannabis will only spend 1200 in a year on cannabis. Do you spend 1200 on booze? If you're a drinker, you don't. You spend more than that. It's amazing. It's big amounts of money. But it gives us a chance to take a look at ourselves and our own consumption. And are we consuming appropriately? What are we spending? What are we spending on? Why not look at it? And it's more data. The the data agency estimates Canadians spent five point seven billion, ninety percent of it for illegal. So I want to tell you they're saying ninety percent of that five point seven billion was non medical. So in other words, they're saying the medical people spent oh only ten percent of that five hundred and seventy million dollars. Half a billion. Half a billion out of the five point seven billion were medical. I got to say, they're way out, way out. Uh, and yet you compare it to the, they do compare it to the brewing industry and tobacco. Tobacco in Canada brought in a billion for tobacco growers and that, and the brewing industry 2.9. But they say there, the big difference is Cannabis can't be cross-border, so cannabis has to be created here in Canada and sold here in Canada, thus a much bigger home market where a lot of our beer is imported and even more of our tobacco is imported. So it's going to be the biggest industry, uh, farming industry in Canada. It will be. Interesting story. I hope you enjoy it. It's below. Let's move on. This is one that I did a bit of a rant about uh, last week, and I'm still upset about it. Uh, the title of this is, I understand Chief Bray is doing his job. Regina marijuana dispensary owners respond to the police chief. 
the background of this story. Let me give you a little bit of background. About two weeks ago, maybe three, uh, in the question and answer period, our Prime Minister, Mr. Trudeau, yeah, I don't like him, uh, but I respect the office. Our Prime Minister said in a question and answer period that uh, we will continue, we being the, the government, will continue to push for prosecution of people who break the law until the law is changed. Then we will look at how to pardon them and move on, which is, which in and of itself is, a, is stupid because why create criminals that you know later you have to pardon? It's just, but it's the liberals. I mean, that's just more work for government. That means we hire more people for government. That means bigger government. So I understand them doing it. I'm against it. Uh, but because of that, the police chief in Regina and later the police chief in Saskatoon as well, Saskatchewan's other major city, uh, both came out saying that they're going to crack down on dispensaries. Yet, Saskatchewan is one of the only provinces across Canada that have said that when they start up later this year for full recreational, it's going to be all private enterprise. All private enterprise. So why are you now going out and arresting people who later would be you just have to give them uh, I would prefer somebody like a police chief come out and say look you guys as long as you stick to only medical as long as you never let a youth inside your store uh, you are keeping this off the streets and making it safer for medical people to get their stuff and quicker for medical people to get their stuff. As long as you stay away from the recreational market until it's turned on, we won't bother you. That's what should be a moratorium on dispensaries providing for, because it's fully legal, the medical community. This is really important. All of the, you read this story and these dispensaries are saying it's very disheartening to say the least. The, they don't understand the business. They don't understand the people who, they always say, hey, street or dispensary, you're the same, you're illegal. Only online. That's unfair to sick people who either don't have a computer and can't buy online or don't have a fixed address. Uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons that people can't follow the LP method. And I want to remind those police chiefs that our Supreme Court of Canada said that it's our right to have it in any form. And re many, many older people need to have the high concentrated liquids and oils and those are not for sale by LPs. They just aren't. Very weak oil is. So either an old person can buy from a dispensary and get the stuff that could help save their lives, or they can buy from an LP and get really cheap crap, or they can buy dry flour from an LP and you're forcing these old people to make their own oil. I hurt my shoulders like crazy making my rosin. I would not want somebody 20 years older than me trying to make rosin. So I get really upset at this. Let's turn them all into criminals and we'll fix it later. It's a dumb move. It's a very liberal move and it should not be happening. That's my two cents. And in Canada, pennies don't count for anything. Uh, last two stories are more international. This one's about New Yorkers. More than half, 62% of New Yorkers support legal weed. So is it going to happen? The state of New York, despite having one of the biggest cities in the world, still hasn't legalized recreational marijuana. They have decriminalized it, but they have this little thing that it has to be 
kept be kept out of the public view. They arrest youth through this by having or anybody by having them empty their pockets. Therefore, the marijuana that was in their pocket is now in public view and they can be arrested for it. So it is decriminalized, but there's still loopholes to allow cops to still arrest people for simple possession. It needs to be legalized. And the final one, under all this pressure, supposed pressure, and I don't think it's pressure, I've said my two cents on that, by Jeff Sessions and the Federal Department of Justice, Vermont didn't just legalize, it was their legislature that legalized cannabis. So it's the first state to have done it completely through legislature by introducing a law, not by Anyways, I don't understand the U.S. politics all that much. Let's talk below about it because we're at the end of hippie news. I've done the best I can for you. That's the stories I've got. If you want other stories covered, send them to me. They'll be part of my next one. I really appreciate all of you watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Talk below. Share these things. Let's get the stigma out of there. Support your dispensaries. Soon they're going to get out of the gray market and be into the full market. And then we can really show our support and show that the LPs need to follow a different path. Peace and cheers, friends. Love and harmony. That's me looking for my cursor so I can press stop recording. Peace, friends. Hope you have a great week.